Hey, what's up, guys? My name is like Lady Gamer, and welcome back, you guys, to another Call of Duty video. And today, guys, I'm going to be bringing you some very helpful tips and tricks on how to get better at Modern Warfare Remastered. Now, just recently, I've been playing some Modern Warfare Remastered. I've been having a lot of fun with this game, and I want to be sharing you guys five tips and tricks on how to improve in Modern Warfare Remastered. Now, if you guys do enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate it, like rating. But anyway, let's get straight on into the video. So, the first tip I'm going to be giving you guys is using guns that you feel comfortable with. Now, if you played COD 4 already, you probably know what the best guns are in this game. Just if you don't know, I'm going to be showing you guys a list of what I think are the all-around just good weapons to use that are just solid choices, and they are the M4 Carbine, the M16, the AK-74U, and the MP5. Those are all some very solid choices, and of course, there's many other guns that you can try out, but make sure you use a gun that you feel comfortable with and that you know that you can use and that you just really, you know, feel like you can get a lot of kills and that you're always on point with your aim. Now another tip that I can give you guys is knowing the strong points and weak points of your gun. Now what I mean by that, I'll give you guys an example. For example, like the AK-47, which is a very good gun at close range and medium range distance, but at those longer range distance, you're better at burst firing or tap firing because you're going to be more effective and more accurate instead of spraying and praying because you definitely don't want to do that with the AK-47 at longer ranges because the recoil is insanely high. So just some basic tips like that. So the second tip that I can give you guys is using the right attachments and perks for your class. Now when it comes to attachments, there aren't really a lot of attachments in Modern Warfare Remastered, but when I do use an attachment, I usually use the red dot sight or the silencer. I wouldn't really use the ACOG scope or the silencer, I mean, not the silencer, I mean the um, grenade launcher because the grenade launcher, of course, you don't really want to be noob tubing, and not only that, it does also replace perk 1, and I feel like you do need um, perks in this game, so I wouldn't really use the grenade launcher attachment. But but some guns don't even require an attachment like the AK-74U, it's completely fine, you don't really have to have an attachment with your gun like you have to have with the newer CODs, but anyway, stuff like that. And also the perks, I can't be showing you guys what the best perk is because everybody's going to be having a different playstyle, but when I usually use a perk, I have two perks that are always my go-to perks, and I use it in pretty much all of my class setups, and those are Juggernaut and Stopping Power. Now Stopping Power increases your um, bullet damage, and Juggernaut increases your health. Now, I usually use stopping power because um, I feel like my aim is pretty good. I usually can land my shots, but if you feel like your aim is a little bit shaky or off, then I would recommend Juggernaut because you have that slight advantage in gunfights. Not really, but I mean, if you really feel like your aim is a little bit off and stuff like that, you can go ahead and use Juggernaut. Now, for perk 1, I usually use Bandolier because I want to have extra ammunition because in this game, unfortunately, there isn't a scavenger perk. First, in Modern Warfare 2, I believe they put the scavenger perk, but you can't replenish ammo in this game which is kind of sad that's why i like to use the bandolier perk and then also for perk 3 i can't be showing you guys what the best perk is for perk 3 because perk 3 has a wide variety of choices but when i'm using an smg i usually use steady aim and extreme conditioning and then when i use an assault rifle i usually use deep impact and then if you're going to be sniping iron lungs it's definitely going to be a solid choice now also just to give you guys another tip make sure you definitely do run the secondary in this game because in the newer cods you usually would just use your primary weapon but in this game, I feel like you should use a secondary, and the best secondary, in my opinion, to use in this game is the Deagle, hands down. It's just one of the best guns, the best secondary to use. It's definitely just really good, because usually it's a two-shot kill up close and three to four shots at a longer distance, but it's very reliable, and I do recommend the Deagle. Now, the third tip that I'm going to be giving you guys is playing more strategic and smart. Now, this was my biggest mistake when I started to play Modern Warfare Remastered. I played it like a futuristic Call of Duty. I literally just went to rooms sprayed and pray with the p90 i know it sounds pretty newbie but that's really what i did and you're not going to get kills like that you have to play more passive you have to play more smart when you use this game and then also you have to have good map knowledge that really defines that you're going to be doing good in a game now when it comes to map knowledge it's very important to know stuff like flank routes and stuff like that it's really going to be helping you out and also another thing in this game when it comes to gunfights you need to pick out your gunfights wisely okay because when two or more people are going to be shooting at you chances are you're going to get killed usually that's why you have to pick out your gunfights one on one because you're going to have a bigger chance of winning a gunfight and that's why you do definitely need to be wise when you're choosing your gunfights and basic stuff like that but anyway like i said um you have to have good map knowledge you have to know the common flank routes and a big mistake that i did as well is for example when a uav is up and i see four people just camping in a room or stuff like that i would just literally rush in with confidence with the p90 and just spray and pray and then i find out i get no kills you don't 
don't want to be doing that guys you want to play more passive now when i say passive i don't mean that you should camp you shouldn't be doing that what i mean is that you should just play more passive more precautious of where you're going and make sure you also check the corners because that is very important to do in any call of duty or any first person shooter literally checking the corners because of course there's going to be campers unfortunately that's why you have to keep an eye out of that now another tip that I can give you guys is winning gunfights. Now when it comes to gunfights in this game, it's very arbitrary. And what I mean by that, it's very unexpected. You never know if somebody's going to be using Last Stand or Martyrdom or Juggernaut. All those perks are going to be hindering you from winning gunfights. But I can't be showing you guys 100% guaranteed how to win gunfights. I can't be showing you guys how to do that. But I can be showing you guys how to improve winning gunfights with these simple tips. Now when it comes to first person shooters, in my opinion, the two most important and vital factors are map knowledge and sensitivity. Sensitivity definitely is a big thing and there's always a huge controversy in what is the best sensitivity or you know what is really the best sensitivity. Is it higher or lower sensitivity? Now I can of course be showing you guys what the best sensitivity is. I can't be saying like yeah 8 is the best sensitivity. I can't be doing that because of course people grip the thumbsticks a different way. Everybody's going to be different so I can't be showing you that guys but what I can be showing you is I can show you a scale of what I think the average first person shooter can usually adapt to and that scale is anywhere between 4 through 8 so um, you don't want to be going lower than 4 because when you do that you feel that your aim is a little bit sluggish and you can't be really shooting onto your target it's going to feel really weird and then when you go above 8 your aim is a little bit wacky it's going to be really hard to aim I would really suggest anywhere before um, between 4 through 8 because that is really solid and then also what I would recommend and this is what I did I would start at the lowest sensitivity at four and then make your way up until what you think is feels comfortable and also once you find your best sensitivity make sure you keep it make sure you always keep it because you're going to be building muscle memory it's going to be a lot quicker because um i did this once i literally played for a month with a five sensitivity and then i just switched over to a seven and i feel like holy crap it's really hard to aim and stuff like that because you're just not used to it but right now i use a sensitivity of seven i used to play on a five just like I said but I feel like 7 is really good for me it's not too slow it's not also too fast it's literally right between so that is another tip that I can give you now the next tip is really only going to apply to PlayStation 4 user uh, I'm not too sure if Xbox one you can really do this tip but that tip is if you're using L2 and R2 to shoot basically the triggers on the PlayStation 4 make sure you try out flipped because flipped is a lot better in my opinion because what it does is where you usually would throw your tacticals and lethals it changes that so you can ADS and shoot so basically the L1 and R1 button is what you're going to be using to shoot and I always use it I never use the triggers and it's gotten a little bit it got me a little bit of time to actually get used to switching from flip because I was using the triggers for quite a while but now I just absolutely love using the L1 and R1 button and the reason why is you're going to have a, an advantage in those gunfights because you, you, you're going to be shooting faster because buttons are a lot more responsive than triggers because the triggers take a little bit of time to register that you actually did it in the game it's not going to be effective you're not going to be winning gunfights trust me if you switch to flip it's going to be a lot better you can shoot faster well i mean you can't switch shoot faster but you can ads and get the first shot on the enemy which is very important in this game because i feel like in any first person shooter when you get the first shot it usually defines if you're going to be winning the gunfight or not that's why i would suggest doing that now another tip that I can give you guys is drop shotting. Now drop shotting is very effective in this game. It's just like all the other old school Call of Duties. Drop shotting is very good. It confuses your enemies. It pretty much catches them off guard. It's really good to drop shot. And also just to make drop shotting a little bit easier, make sure you guys do definitely play on tactical. Um, because I wouldn't see why you wouldn't play on tactical because of course you're going to be keeping your thumbsticks on the analog and you want to make sure that you can do that because of course then if you're not going to be doing that you're not going to be accurate when you're drop shotting so i do suggest playing on tactical but anyway drop shotting is very good it confuses the enemies especially for those lower ranked players going to be having a hard time to adjust their aim to your head or to your body anywhere so that's why i really do suggest using drop shot now don't always drop shot every single time just kind of like mix it up a little bit but drop shotting is very effective now the fifth tip and the final tip that i'm going to be showing you guys and this is going to be a very good tip is using your environment to your advantage and what i mean by that is using 
using head glitching spots, using buildings, or using common flank routes. Those are very important in this game, and I feel like it's a necessity to have. Especially head glitching is very dominant in this game because your body isn't getting really exposed, and people are going to be having a lot of hard. They're going to be having a lot of hard time to actually shoot you because they, of course, only your head is visible. They're going to be really struggling, and until they get their sensitivity or until they get their aim to your head, it's going to be taking a long time for them to adjust. And then while they do that, of course, you're going to have the opportunity to kill the person, which is very good. And then also another thing is when somebody's camping or not me, I'm, I'm sorry, not camping, but when you are on a building is what I mean. If you, you, It's definitely a lot better because people are going to be needing to adjust to your head as well if you're on a building. And I feel like if you go on higher ground, you have a bigger advantage because first of all, somebody has to adjust their aim vertically and that's already going to take a lot of time and then they have to shoot their um, um, your head and that's already going to be taking a lot of time and that really gives you the opportunity to kill the person which is very good and then also another thing is flank routes flank routes are definitely very important especially if you're going to be running a stealthy class setup with something like the p90 it's really good because you can get behind the enemies and having good map knowledge is definitely important in this game but that is pretty much it guys for how to get better at modern warfare remastered if you guys like this video make sure you definitely do drop a like and if you find this video beneficial guys make sure you definitely do subscribe for my youtube channel if you guys are new but anyway guys i will see you all in the next video god bless this nation peace out guys peace Bye.